we ha- we've talked about dairy on the show a lot, but never really about genetics. So how exactly does developing genetics for dairy really work? Well, it's, you know, th- there's a many different factors that go in, into dairy yeah. uh, genetics. You know, <clears throat> a lot of it is selecting uh, bulls for the next, you know, generation. There's selecting cows of, you know, which which cows you want to breed the bulls to, to sort of prop, propagate the good genetics. Uh, mm-hmm. And, you know, and it it's gotten really wild. A lot of people are doing in vitro fertilization and embryo transfer and to sort of prop up a lot of the, the good genetics and get more of the good genetics now, instead of just, you know, getting one, one calf from one cow, you can get 20 plus calves from one cow probably in one year or more, you know, it, it just, you know, some of these cows and can have hundreds of daughters and, and bulls can have thousands of daughters uh, based on genetics and, and how you do a, a lot of the mating. So it, it's, uh, it, it can be pretty wild, you know, that's not everybody, but, uh, you know, probably your traditional herd is, is getting one calf per cow and, and, but still using good genetics to, uh, you know, increase the milk production, fertility, survival of their cows. Yeah. So are those kind of the pillars of what you're looking for genetics wise, like milk production, the health of the animal and their fertility? Like, are those the three things you're really trying to pay attention towards? Yeah. I think everybody thinks about milk production. Obviously that's the key. You want, you still want to have high production, but I think we focus on fat and protein. So Mm -hmm. fat and protein are, are big ones for, you know, cheese production in, in the U S here. Uh, and then health and longevity, you know, can these cows last a long time? We don't want many health problems with them. So it's really selection for health, longevity, and fertility. At least that's that's kind of what I've focused on a lot in my uh, genetics career is, is those factors. Obviously, milk production, milk production comes along with it. I gotcha. And like when it comes to different breeds, I know that. So in dairy, you're, you work with jerseys, right? Uh, well, I, I grew up showing jerseys. And, you grew up showing I, jerseys. I still have jerseys uh, at, at home. So Okay. I know that people in dairy, they will fight one another on which breed is best, like Holsteins, jerseys, Guernseys, all that stuff. Um, I mean, do those different breeds have limitations on what those genetics can um, can kind of accomplish? Or can you really just kind of piece it together and just kind of, I don't know, the, the sky's the limit? Well, I think every every breed has their differences. Obviously some, you know, are more for high production. Some are, have better longevity. Some have mm-hmm. better fertility. So I think it, you know, it really depends on, on the farmer and their management and their barns and their stalls, what, what breed works well for them. Uh, I, you know, in my opinion, there is only one breed, but <laughs> <laughs> exactly, <laughs> you know, I, I think if you asked any farmer, they'll, they will tell you there's only one breed, but it, you might get a different answer <laughs> from, from everybody. <laughs> that's funny. I mean, that, that's a good point though, because those farmers like yourself, like they have experience working with that breed. And so like, you know, what the breeds like, what the genetics are like when people outside of working with that breed are like, eh, no, like this breed does that. So I, I love how defensive are because you guys are the expert, like when it comes to those breeds specifically, I think that's awesome. Right. Right. And even in my, you know, in, I, I work with a lot of different breeds, not just Jersey and, and Holsteins, but I've worked with European breeds, uh, mm. in, in my graduate career and stuff. And, but I, I still come back to Jersey and you know my heart has been there for a long time and it's still there even though I do appreciate a lot of other breeds no no doubt about it there's uh, good things and and not so good things about every breed so if you no pressure at all if you had to give let's say a top three dairy breeds what would they be obviously Jersey number one Jersey's number one (laughs) um there's a a European breed called Montpellier uh I have appreciated that uh, breed. It's an Alps breed. Uh, mm. And I actually like uh, Normandy. Normandy is, so those are both French breeds. And I've seen both of those breeds in France and, you know, kind of seen those cows in their, you know, working clothes, I guess you could say. And, and uh, they're, they're wonderful, wonderful dairy breeds uh, for uh, many different reasons. 
but there's, you know, there, there's good things. There's lots of breeds and I, I think that's good. You know, we, we all don't need one breed of, of cow. That would be uh, not so good. That would be boring. Exactly. Um, exactly. It'd, be, it'd be super boring. Like I, I would imagine that, that would be Holstein. I feel like those are like the default dairy cow. And like, do you know how, why that might be the default dairy cow? Obviously maybe because of Chick-fil-A and that's the dairy cow <laughs> that they always say like, you know, eat more chicken. But do you know why that's kind of like the default dairy cow? Well, it, it really became the default. It, it is the highest producing breed. Uh, mm. And obviously, you know, when we started increasing milk production here, even in the U.S. and uh, around the world, it really was the one that produced the most milk. And that's what they were really striving for for many years was lots of milk production. And the Holstein will will definitely do that. They by far will outproduce from a milk volume standpoint, most of the other breeds. That, yeah, that, that's what I hear. But I, I feel like would you say like a lot of the big scale farms have Holsteins or, I mean, does it, does it just kind of vary? I think it kind of varies. A lot of them have Holstein, but Holstein has been sort of declining in, in the United mm. States from a, a breed standpoint. A lot of uh, larger farms are going to Jersey. Some have gone to Jersey, Jersey numbers have increased, but then kind of crossbred numbers are are starting to increase too. So a lot of these, larger farms are using multiple breeds, whether it's Holstein and Jersey and crossing them, or some are using other, uh, you know, European breeds or, or other ones to, to breed to. So it's, it's kind of a, uh, a mix uh, of many things, but Holstein numbers have been declining, at least in the U S. Hey everybody, welcome to our DC studio here with farm traveler. Um, if you like this video, consider liking, if you want to comment on it, of course, commenting that helps us out a ton. And if you want to see more content on Farm Traveler, how you can connect with farmers, more farm tours, stuff like that, and of course, clips from our podcast, hit subscribe. We just crossed over a thousand subscribers, so thank you all so much. We have new content every week. And of course, our little shorts here, which are, you know, like reels, but on YouTube. So thanks for watching. Check out more videos. We'll see you in the next one.